Okay, today I'm going to talk about the oil pressure switch and the oil pressure warning light on the dashboard. Let's see how they work and how to test them. This oil pressure system, the switch and the warning light are very important because they will indicate whether the oil pressure in the engine is adequate, which is quite important because if we run an engine without oil pressure, the engine can be seriously damaged. Therefore, this system is quite important. So, before moving on to the diagram to see how the system works electrically and to do some tests here as well. Broadly speaking, what we have in the electrical system is going to be the oil pressure switch, which in this case we see here. Generally, we will see it near where the oil filter is, although there are always exceptions, but generally we will see it there. Cars generally have a warning light and a switch, although there are some other variants, such as the Chevrolet model, which has a sensor and a meter, but most cars have a single wire switch and the warning light, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So, basically here we have the oil pressure switch, which is going to be a one-wire switch. As we can see, we only have one cable coming out of here and that cable is going to go directly to what is the instrument panel. But before showing how to test both the sensor and the warning light, we are going to look at the diagram to see electrically how this system works, which is quite simple. Basically we are going to have what is our indicator light and our switch. Electrically the switch is only going to be a one-wire switch with two contacts, as we see here. When the vehicle is off and we turn the switch key to on, there will only be power to the indicator light, and the only thing it will need is ground so that our indicator light, the bulb, will light up. So, that ground will come directly from the housing of the oil pressure switch and, electrically, we can understand it as having two contacts and, when there is no pressure, it will be directly grounded, which will cause the bulb to be powered when we have the switch key in the on position. And the switch, when there is no pressure, will bridge the ground and send it through the cable, the only cable that the switch has, directly to the lamp, and it will light up, which is what we see with the switch key in the on position and the engine off, the indicator light on. Now, when we start the vehicle, the power supply here remains, but the switch diaphragm is pressed due to the pressure. If the correct pressure is met, the contact position will move and what will happen is that the ground will no longer be bridged, but will be disconnected and our light will stop illuminating. Now, if when we are driving the indicator on the dashboard lights up, it means that something is happening here in the switch, that the ground is being bridged again. What could be the causes? One is that what is failing is the switch or the wiring, that it is grounded to ground, for example, the wiring, or that the switch is directly grounded and the internal diaphragm no longer works. And the other cause could be that we do indeed have very low oil pressure. When there is very little or no pressure, even if the switch is good, the contact will not leave this position and the light will continue to illuminate, indicating that something is happening. So, having said all this, testing the indicator light will be very easy. What we have to do first, for example, is turn the switch key to on and the indicator light should light up. The indicator light should come on. So, here, for example, we are going to turn the switch key to on. As we can see, there it is, the indicator light is on. So, if we had a problem, for example, that the indicator light stays on all the time, what we simply have to do is, with the switch key in the on position, disconnect the switch. And if the indicator light goes off, it means that the indicator light is fine, because, as we know, the switch is normally closed, it is automatically grounding the contact, that is why the light comes on. So, if I disconnect it, the light should go off. And with that we would be realizing that the problem is not the light, since the light stops lighting up when we disconnect it. We remove the ground, that eliminates the possibility, for example, that the cable is shorted to ground, and that could cause the light to stay on all the time. But if we disconnect it and the light goes off, then that eliminates that possibility and we would be thinking more about a problem with the sensor, a malfunctioning sensor, a damaged sensor or oil pressure in the engine, which would be even more serious. So, in a car that works well, the light should turn off when we remove the switch, which is what we are going to do next. As you can see, the light goes off as soon as we disconnect the switch. Now, if we want to go further, we can connect our test light to the battery negative or ground. And we are going to touch our connector with the test light and the light should turn on every time we touch the test light to the connector contact, in this case the cable that goes to the switch. And as you can see, the light turns on and off every time I touch the contact. So, that's how we test the warning light. In this way, we quickly rule out a possible problem with the oil pressure warning light or light. So now I'm going to remove the sensor to see the tests we can do separately on the sensor. Okay, 
So now I have the sensor here. That sensor is operational and we're going to see how to test it outside. So, testing it is going to be very simple. Basically, we are going to do two tests here. We are going to test this contact to make sure it is working. We agreed that the switch was a normally closed switch, so we are going to test this contact and we are also going to test the other contact. This contact is when the switch is normally closed, which is grounded to the part where it is screwed. The other contact is the contact that moves when pressure is generated, and the diaphragm makes the contact move here, which removes the ground and turns off the light. Those are basically the two tests that I am going to do here. So, to test the contact that goes directly to ground, we are going to do the following. I am going to put a clamp here directly to the part where it is screwed and I am going to connect it to my multimeter, to one of the two test leads. So, with the other test lead I am going to touch this part here which is the contact. Then we go to the multimeter, to the continuity scale which is the VIP. There it is. So, if the contact is good, you should hear the VIP, which will indicate that we have continuity here and this contact is good. As you can see, here we are testing a part of what is the sensor, which is this contact. This test is not conclusive yet, we need to test the other contact. So, to test the other contact, we are going to do it in a very similar way, but we are going to simulate what the engine pressure is, which is the engine oil pressure. So, with a small hose we are going to adapt it right here. So, basically what I am doing here is the following. I am connecting with this clamp here, where the sensor is screwed, which is where the ground is connected. And with this cable here I am connecting to the pin. Therefore, here electrically I would be connecting from here to here, so there has to be continuity here. For example, if I put my multimeter here, I already have it on the continuity scale, so I am going to connect it there and I am going to connect it here as well. And as you can see, it's giving me continuity there. I'm going to remove it here so it doesn't make so much noise. So, what am I going to do to test the other contact that's here? What I'm going to do is apply pressure here, simulating the engine's oil pressure. In this case, I'm going to apply oil pressure with this gun. I'm going to apply around 20 psi, between 10 and 20 psi. So, if this contact is operational, it's working, okay, when I apply pressure, the contact is going to move and the continuity is going to be interrupted. That way I'm going to be able to tell that the sensor is operational and is capable of moving the contact when there's pressure. The contact will move from here to there, interrupting the ground and in this case what's going to be interrupted is the continuity. So, that's what I'm going to do next. As you can see, this switch is operational. Every time I applied pressure with the air gun, the continuity was interrupted, indicating that the sensor is in good condition. That's basically how it's tested. If, in this case, when I apply air pressure here, the sensor doesn't interrupt continuity, it means that the contact isn't moving and the sensor isn't working properly. In this case, I tested it at a pressure between 10 and 20 PCI which is generally within the range of most switches. If it doesn't work at 20 PCI, it most likely means that the sensor is no longer working. It's possible that the diaphragm or contact is already damaged internally in the sensor. Obviously, it's always best to check the pressure in the manual for each specific card to find out the exact specifications. 
So, that's basically how you test both the oil pressure switch and the warning light on the dashboard. An important detail or an important point to mention before ending the video is that, for example, in a scenario where our warning light stays on while we are driving the vehicle, if, in a scenario like that, we test the light and it is fine, and we test our switch and it is fine, what we have to do immediately after is physically place an oil pressure gauge where the sensor is and measure the oil pressure. If we do not have oil pressure or if the pressure is too low, less than 5 psi, what we have to do is stop the vehicle immediately, as soon as possible, and find and resolve the mechanical problem that we have in the engine, which is causing the lack of oil pressure in the engine, since it is something quite serious. We have to resolve the problem whatever it may be, whether it is a pump, a clogged filter, dirt, excessive engine wear, excessive oil pressure, whatever the reason that is causing low oil pressure in the engine. We have to repair it before driving the vehicle normally, because if we drive a vehicle with no oil pressure or very low oil pressure, we will completely melt it. This is an important detail. These tests are important because they will quickly clear up any doubts about electrical problems or switch or warning light problems. But the definitive test is always to physically apply the pressure gauge and see exactly how much oil pressure we have in the engine. And with all that said, I will now finish the video. I invite you to stay tuned because I will continue talking more about these types of topics and other topics related to automotive mechanics. That will be all for now. Thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe and like if the video was useful to you. And that's all for me. Thank you very much and see you next time.